What's going on guys? My name is Jack. Welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about tips and tricks for shooting live events. Now, over the course of 2017, I shot over 30 live events or I think it was just about 30. So I've been doing this for about two years now. So in the past two years, I've shot between 30 and 50 live events. Definitely over 30. I don't think it's quite 50 yet. So definitely in between there somewhere though. I, I can get away with saying it's in between 30 and 50. And uh, overall, throughout that time, I've 100% picked up some pretty good tips and tricks in terms of shooting live events, what you should do, what you shouldn't do, uh, just things to keep in mind. And overall, if you are starting live event videography, you are uh, actively involved maybe, or you're just at the beginning, basically whatever stage you are in live event videography, uh, this is gonna show you how to actually shoot live events and overall just give you some information on where I have, uh, you know, maybe wasn't the strongest at first and improved or, or things I've basically just noticed. Anyways, here's tips for shooting live events in 2018. The first tip I'm gonna come in with is gonna be to arrive early so you can get those establishing shots. And this is gonna help you better tell a story in the post-production process where say you arrive an hour late, right? The party's already started. Nobody's queued up outside for you to get those important establishing shots of the queue lining up or people putting wristbands on, or um, people coming in, right? I've done time lapses of, of all, the, all the people flooding through the doors and getting their tickets, etc. All these shots that help paint to the viewers, um, the, the paint the picture and the story to the viewer who's watching this video afterwards that, you know, this is the build up to the drop of the night. You can't just kind of jump straight into the party. You could, by all means, there's no set way to do it, actually. Let me correct myself, but it wouldn't make much sense. It's not going to be a sequential story being told. And overall, um, storytelling is, you know, that's video production 101, essentially. Even if you're not doing a short film or, or something that's literally story based, you want to tell a story by the middle, uh, beginning, middle and end. That's a story. That's literally the, the code d decrypted for you for a story. Create a, a compelling beginning, for example, like a line building up or like people flooding through the door, then create a compelling middle, which is for a live event, just the live event being active and, and, and happening, the crowd, et cetera, like that. And then obviously the end where it's gonna finalize and, and, and finish. But arriving early is gonna help you get those establishing shots and not have you rushing around trying to get a bunch of semi, semi okay stuff, like maybe people pouring drinks or something like that at the bar, kind of to, to make up for these, these original shots, which trust me, get there early, get these establishing shots. In post-production, you're gonna be very, very happy that you did this. You're gonna be able to tell a much better story. Now, once the actual event is going on, I promise you're gonna thank me again for this, is just use similar settings. They don't have to be 100% similar. The frame rate, I would definitely keep the same the whole time unless you have a slow-mo built into your camera like I do, but even then, I pretty much never use slow-mo in a club because obviously my slow-mo was 120 FPS, um, so that gets rid of a lot of light. You know, obviously the higher the frame per second, the less light is being let in. So in the club, I'm pretty much always using regular um, re regular frame rate of just like 24 or 23.9, blah, 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 whatever. Um, so use consistent settings. They don't have to be 100% identical because sometimes in the club or anywhere you're shooting a live event, uh, you know, you might need to put the ISO up a little bit, a, a little bit down, but keep pretty consistent settings the whole time. I promise you, you'll thank me a thousand times for this once you're in the post-production process and you only have to apply one basic color correction layer to even an adjustment layer over all your clips aside from going in and individually um, color correcting and color grading each clip because all the settings are, are different and you have to do a different grade and a different correction to each one, making your post-production process a thousand times harder. Um, trust me, definitely use consistent settings the entire way through. You will thank me for that one big time and uh, you know, I've seen what happens if you don't use consistent settings the whole time. Trust me, it's annoying. Your shots don't even look similar. It's stuff stuff can get a little out of hand. The next tip is gonna be to not miss anything. Um, and I actually contradict this in my next point, but we'll see that in a sec, all right? So don't miss anything um, within reason. So, you know, if you're there to shoot a live event, make sure you keep track of all the different DJs that are changing, for example. You know, there, there might be five, six different DJs throughout the course of the night. They might only be there for 45 minutes each. 
that's enough time though to definitely get a good five, 10 clips of each, each DJ, you know what I mean? So um, that's just one example, by the way, for example, the, the front of the crowd, the front of the crowd is, is constantly changing. If there's, you know, some good people giving it good energy there at, at the front of the crowd, film them and then, you know, wait for that crowd to, to rotate and that there'll be new people at the front of the crowd. Boom, get them now. Cause that's a new, it's just new people, you know what I mean? So um, shoot or don't miss anything. That was the name of this point and I totally stand by that. Don't miss anything. But then my next point is gonna contradict that. Um, and let me just finalize this one quick. So don't don't miss anything. Literally just shoot, shoot it all, shoot it all. But then my next point now is gonna contradict it by this. Don't overshoot. I know, so that's two pretty conflicting points. Shoot, shoot everything or don't miss anything and then don't overshoot. Don't miss anything means make sure you get good coverage of everything, but not overshooting is gonna save you time again when filtering through these clips in the post-production process. Whereas when I first started, I would just shoot until all my memory cards were full. Um, obviously, if this is your first couple events, this is probably the right thing to do. I can't, I, I can't lie to you, right? Because you're not entirely tuned into whether you've got the right shots. Uh, you know what I mean? Now I've shot 30 to 50 live events. So my formula is already ingrained in my head. I know at the end of the night, whether I confidently have enough footage or whether I need to hit, you know, the stage or wherever for another five, 10 minutes, finalize my footage, make sure I have enough. Uh, you might not know that in the first stages of doing live event videography and shooting live events. So by all means, if you're that person, overshoot. By all means, I'll, I'll change this. But if you are established, you've shot some live events, you already know what you're doing, don't overshoot. Uh, because this is gonna waste your time um, in the post-production process in terms of the fact that I used to have 300 clips. I used to have 300 clips when I finished an event. Um, 300 clips, for me, it was too much. It's just way too much. I only need about 150 clips to create a full video, a, a full video. I know I'm confident in my camera. I know I'm gonna have within 150 to 160 clips I'm gonna chop that down first off to about only 100 clips or 130 clips, 120 clips, something like that. Um, now, actually probably more like 100 clips and that's gonna be a solid 100 clips, okay? So don't, don't overshoot because you don't wanna be deleting 50 clips of one DJ and you won't, you know, then you're in, you end up with only the five clips of that DJ you wanted and were actually good. So, so don't, you know, if there's nothing else to shoot, like I said, don't miss anything. If there's nothing new to shoot, you don't need to shoot it. For example, if you know you've already got uh, good enough footage of this DJ here, right? Or, you know, I'm using this as an example. You don't need to shoot the, uh, you know, the, the 15th shot of him, right? So, you, you know, you got 14 really good shots of this DJ. Don't, it's definitely overkill to be shooting when you know you've already got sufficient footage of this particular thing. It doesn't have to be a DJ. It could be the crowd. It could be the decorations. It could be whatever. Don't overshoot stuff that you know you've already got. But by all means, if you're in the first stages of doing this, overshoot because you probably don't know what you got. You know what I mean? I, I can easily tell. You might not be able to tell uh, the quality of your footage yet. Um, next up is gonna be get large variety of shots. Also, um, I'm, I'm trying to gear this by the way, just a side note, I'm trying to gear this just towards more more beginners, I guess, because I feel as though that's, that's the role most of you will be in in terms of live event videography. So get large variety of shots. I'm gonna give you some personal information which might be not applicable to you, but it was definitely applicable to applicable to me when I was first starting out shooting um, I felt a little bit out of place when I was in the club when I was meant to be here filming I just felt a little bit out of place so I would maybe find a spot that I felt comfortable in uh, it could be tucked off to the side of the stage it could be on the stage it could be behind the DJ decks wherever I felt a little bit comfortable there and I'll just kind of stay there and try, and try and make the most out of this spot you know what I mean and and not really uh, too sure where to go, etc. cetera. Um, and this just had me essentially be uh, creating some pretty similar pieces of content, um, or my bad, that's the wrong way of wording it. It had me creating pretty similar shots throughout my entire piece of content, right? Whereas if I was only uh, ducked off to the right side of the stage the whole night, and this is where I felt comfortable because you know what I mean, I was still getting into filming live events. This was a new kind of uh, thing for me about a year and a half, two years ago, something like that. So I, I might've been a little bit nervous. I might've just been, been a little bit, uh, not necessarily totally confident in that particular, um, uh, what's it called, 
um, setting, you know, for example, like now I am, but then I would be sort of posted off to the right side of the stage, somewhere maybe behind the DJ decks, and my footage would all be very similar at the end of the night, right? So get large variety of shots. And this ties into my next point, which is go where you want. But let me talk about the shots first, right? And get large variety of shots. Um, just go everywhere, get your shots, get long shots from, you know, be in the crowd, getting the shot of the DJ, be behind the DJ, getting the shot over, over the shoulders of the crowd, get, you know, from the side of the stage, this side of the stage, everywhere, look up, are there any balconies you could get to, you could shoot, uh, you know, um, more, more broad uh, shots, more broad establishing shots. Um, overall, just get a massive variety of shots. Don't hold yourself to one position, one place, go everywhere uh, and, and get a large variety of shots. And like I said, that goes into my next point now, which is go where you want. This perfectly ties into that, that last point because I, I definitely look at, in retrospect, felt a little bit uncomfortable because this was something new I was doing. Uh, I didn't really necessarily understand my, my position and my value there, uh, I, I don't think, because I'd just come off being someone who went to the club when I was much younger and then I got into filming at the club, so I was actually hired to be there, and I might have just still still been in the mentality that I was like, still just a regular kid going there to, to, to get fucked up and party and shit. Um, so go where you want. If you're here shooting a live event, you are hired to be here. You are important, you know what I mean? You can go where you want. That saying, I'm hired here to film, I'm the videographer, that's gonna get you where you want. So abuse that power, go wherever you want, no one else there, you know what I mean? Any of the other employees there, they're on the same level as you. You're not below them, you're not above them by all means. You're, you're all on the same level. They're gonna treat you with respect. You are hired to do a job here tonight. You're not just coming to this live event to drink, to take drugs, to do whatever. You're coming here to do a job, right? So boom. Uh, by all means, if that didn't click to you, which I don't think it clicked to me back then, like I said, because I'd sort of been transitioning from the, the role of somebody who was in the club just partying to someone who was filming in the club. And you're hired. This is what you're doing for the night. This is your job. So go where you want. You totally have access to it. Um, boom. Go where you want. And finally, make sure your stuff is safe. I just wanted to throw this at the end because uh, the first clubs I started filming in, shout out to my homie Noah, we started filming in some pretty ghetto little nightclubs. We, some stupid stuff. We weren't, even, we weren't even getting paid when we first literally started doing this probably two years ago. Uh, you know, these promoters would just drive us up to the event, sort us out with, to be honest, our drugs and our, and, you know, and our drink, etc. Um, because we were pretty young then. Uh, well, not even too young, but like 16, no, like 17, something like that, when I first started doing this. Um, and keeping your stuff in a safe place, believe me, this is essential. These ghetto little nightclubs I used to be filming in, uh, to begin with, they didn't give a, they didn't give a fuck about our stuff, obviously, they don't care. In their head, you know what I mean? You just come with the camera around your neck. You don't even have any equipment in your bag that you need to keep safe. You know what I mean? You're just having a fun time with the camera. They're, you know what I mean? They're dumb. They, most promoters, they don't understand filming, obviously, uh, which to you, you're filming. Obviously, you understand filming and the amount of equipment you have to bring. They're stupid, or they're not stupid, but their minds are in a different place. They don't understand this. So you have to push to get yourself a place where you can store your stuff that's gonna be 100% safe. This is the top thing I talk to a promoter about instantly when we meet at the event, outside the event, whatever, I've just called the promoter, hey, hey, come outside, they come outside, you know, we shake hands, etc. First thing I say is, where can we put our stuff? And they assign us or come and, and get, you know, get us VIP wristbands, etc. get us the right, uh, the, 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 the staff wristbands, etc. to get us into the places that we need to go um, to store our stuff safely or to put it at the back of the stage. Make sure your stuff is safe, 100%, you will not, regret this by all means. I don't know how you would possibly regret this. Um, <laughs> trust me, make sure you push to get your stuff in a safe spot. And overall that concludes my how to shoot live events or what was it? Tips for shooting live events in 2018. That's the real title of this video. If you enjoyed, like, comment, subscribe. If you're not subscribed yet, by all means do. I upload video production themed videos every single week exploring video editing, videography, freelance, basically just talking and discussing all the things that I'm personally doing, making a living out of, uh, you know, in my real life. This is real shit right here. And uh, overall, thanks for watching the video. Have a nice day and goodbye.